7 o'clock sharp in Charlotte, North Carolina. And I'd like to welcome you to the Wednesday night Bible study hour for the Archdale Church of Christ, located at 2525 Archdale Drive in Charlotte. Uh, tonight we are coming to you virtually by way of Facebook Live and later archived on YouTube on the channel of our congregation, the Archdale Church of Christ. It's called Archdale Church of Christ YouTube. Uh, you can go there, subscribe, and we have over 140, nearly 150 sermons, lessons, and studies there for your edification. And so, welcome. My name's Russ McCullough, and we have been, on Wednesday nights, been looking at introducing and surveying the books of the Bible. And we've finished the Old Testament, and tonight we are introducing the very last book of the New Testament, the book of Revelation. And so we want to do our best to introduce the book of Revelation, but it will be done in more than just one lesson. It's just too much ground to cover in a single study. Uh, we could, but we won't. So we want to introduce the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show to his servants the things that must soon take place. He made it known by sending his angel to his servant John, who bore witness to the word of God and to the testimony of Jesus Christ, even to all that he saw. So that is a rather lengthy title to this book. We call it the Revelation, or Revelations, or Revelation. Some call it the Apocalypse. And for our purposes, we're going to talk about simply the Revelation. And so before we begin our lesson, let's go to God in prayer. Our most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for this beautiful and wonderful day in the middle of the week. We thank you, Lord, for its pleasant treats and its challenges. We thank you, Lord, for the measure of health you've given to us, the measure of safety, and the abundant physical blessings you've showered upon us this day as you sustain us by the powerful word of Christ continuously. We trust and believe that you will continue to do so until the very last moment of time when the trumpet will sound and there will be a great shout and the Lord will descend and the universe will cease to exist. And all that will be left will be the souls of men the Word of God and that wonderful abode of the Heavenly Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, where they dwell. We pray, Lord, we will be there with them on that last day. And Lord, may we enter into this study with a mind of making sure we are among those who the Lord calls in this book faithful unto even death itself. For we live in perilous times, Lord. There are many who would do ill to the truth and to those who follow it. We pray, Lord, that we will be bold and courageous and brave in the face of increasing persecution in our day and time and may we gain much comfort 
and encouragement from the book of Revelation. Though it was not written to us, Lord, it certainly was written for us. And we can be encouraged and strive to be faithful unto even death itself because of the encouragement of the scriptures. We pray, Lord, you would bless those that we all know, love, and care about that are ill and bereaving and suffering in so many ways these days. We pray, Lord, that you would be with the young people of our country, that they will not be discouraged, that they will not be suicidal, that they will not be depressed, but will look to busy their hands in doing good and seeking Thee. And we pray, Lord, that many young persons and old will turn from their wicked ways, repent of their sins, and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of those sins in order to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit and to be added to the church by the Lord himself. In whose name we do pray, amen. Okay, the revelation, the revelation. It is often called the revelation of John. But it is not the revelation of John. It is a revelation given to John, who then gives it to those to whom it is addressed. And we want to begin this introduction with the, the truth of the matter, that the book of Revelation was not written to 21st century Americans. It does not concern us. It concerns to those who it was written. And no book in the New Testament is more plain about to whom it is written. And so its descent from the throne of God is described. It is a revelation of Jesus Christ. It is a revelation of of and about Jesus Christ that was given to him to show to his servants and we'll see here in a minute who servants we're speaking of because it says the servants that the things concerning must soon take place now Many people believe that the book of Revelation is all about the future. Some believe it's all about the past. And the truth of the matter, the Revelation is about the past, the present, and the future. We must use wisdom when we're looking at this book to understand the ramifications of how it is written. Book of Revelation is written in apocalyptic language. That's why it's often called the Apocalypse. What is apocalyptic language? It is a language uh, used often in Jewish history to write, as it were, in such a way as to elude the enemy should the writings come into the possession of an enemy. They would read it and they would not understand it. It would appear to be foolishness and just so much gobbledygook. And so it is with Revelation. It's written in a language code that's very Jewish. And since we have the Old Testament, we can understand what is being written and why, how it, the language is being constructed and used. In fact, uh, we would know very little about Revelation if it were not for the Old Testament. The Revelation was written in this way. It was a revelation of God. 
given to Jesus Christ, who then dispensed it to his servants. How did he dispense it to his servants? Well, uh, he gave it to his angel, uh, a particular angel who is not named here. And this message from this angel, which was from Jesus Christ, which was from God, was sent to John. And then John wrote it down. Now, who did he write it to? Specifically, it says in verse 4, the seven churches that are in Asia. These are seven congregations in Asia. Now, we're not talking about what we call Asia. We're talking, talking about what the first century Mediterranean Basin Roman Empire people called Asia and what they called Asia turns out to be what we would refer to as modern day Turkey and these seven churches were lo located in modern day Turkey and they are the Church of Christ at Ephesus the Church of Christ at Smyrna the Church of Christ at Pergamum and the Church of Christ at Thyatira and the Church of Christ at Sardis the Church of Christ at Philadelphia and the Church of Christ at Laodicea those seven churches in Asia that is who the Lord wrote this book to and gave it to John to give to them specifically and primarily each one of these churches received a copy of this letter it was read in the assemblies and then it was passed on to other congregations by way of copy and that is how we have come to possess this book because it was passed along from those to whom it was sent it was never sent to us we have received copies of it and it is indeed inspired it is indeed scripture it is indeed the word of God 100% inspired and 100% without error however if we read into this book that it somehow is written to us we will be deluded in many ways now we want to talk more about some matters First of all, and this is so, so very urgently important when it comes to understanding the book of Revelation. In fact, if we do not understand this concept, we will misunderstand the entire book and misapply it in many, many ways. <clears throat> it is about things that are about to happen soon to who to the seven churches in Asia it's about them and about their circumstances and about their trials and their temptations and their discouragements it is 100% about them their present circumstances and what was soon going to happen revelation is not about a it's not a book about things that are going to happen eons later so we want to look at this concept as we uh, look further into uh, chapter one this john that is written to is the last as far as we know the last living apostle John died shortly after this book was written now these are matters of opinion the date of the writing we believe that the date was somewhere around 96 now some say it was written before 70 and the destruction of Jerusalem 
I don't believe that to be an accurate assumption. However, it is a matter of opinion. The book does not say when it was written. However, having said that, in 70, when the temple was destroyed, these churches were very young and in their infancy states. They had not yet matured. And primarily, the persecution of Nero, of Christians in Rome in 68, was a ferocious and deadly and terrible persecution. But it was local to Rome. The seven churches of Asia were not impacted by the persecution of 68. It never went outside of Rome. However, by the time we get to the last decade of the first century, Nero was long dead and on his throne is a man by the name of Domitian. Domitian is a man that is notoriously evil. No one ever hated the church more than Domitian. Now why did Domitian hate the church so badly? Well, he considered himself to be God. Before Domitian, from the time of Caesar, Julius Caesar, until just before Domitian, the Roman Senate would declare a Caesar, an emperor who had passed away, now to be divine, that when he passed from this life and into the next, he became a god. And the Senate allowed people to worship the deities of dead emperors. However, Domitian was a first. He was the first emperor to wish to be acknowledged as divine while he still lived. In fact, he demanded it. Now, there was a religion built around emperor worship. We call it the cult of personality. In this cult of personality, emperor worship was strongest in this area of Asia than it was anywhere, even in Rome itself. The people in this area of, of Asia, modern-day Turkey, in these seven cities, were ate up with emperor worship and demanded that everyone worship the emperor. In fact, this is where terrible laws were enforced. The cult of personality demanded that each citizen, each year, go to the temple of the god Caesar and burn incense and testify that Caesar is Lord. And anyone who did not render such a testimony would be punished and excluded from society. One would not be able to transact business or to have a job or to move about freely unless he acquiesced to the deity of the emperor. And Domitian was the first one. And during his reign, the persecution of Christians began in earnest. And for the first time, the cities of Asia were involved in this persecution. The persecution of Nero in 70 did not, from 68 to 70, did not um, include 
uh, this part of the empire. But it did most certainly in 96 onward. And that is why we believe uh, that the book of Revelation was written in, the, in and around the 96 year period and not early on. But again, that's a matter of opinion. If you believe it was written prior to 70, that's fine. It doesn't matter. What matters is, are we going to listen to the words of this book as they are written directly from the mouth of the Lord? And so uh, no one is more qualified to write about these matters than is John because it says in verse 2 uh, he bore witness to the word of God now we've talked about this extensively uh, of late in our Tuesday through Friday calling on the name of the Lord podcast we've been talking a lot about the fact that only an apostle can testify or to witness the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now, the, we all believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, but only apostles actually witnessed this and were given the right and the obligation by the Lord himself to distribute the knowledge of, of what they intuitively knew and John writes about this and we talked about it not long ago in 1st John chapter 1 this is why John is the perfect uh, testifier to the veracity of the resurrection of Jesus Christ chapter 1 beginning with verse 1 of 1st John that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we looked upon and have touched with our hands concerning the word of life, the life was made manifest, and we have seen it and testify to it and proclaim to you the eternal life, which was with the Father and was made manifest to us. The us are the apostles that which we have seen and heard we proclaim to you we are the apostles so that you too may have fellowship with us and indeed our fellowship is with the father and with his son jesus christ so john and all the apostles including paul are witnesses to the resurrected christ no one else apparently at this time who was a witness were still alive John is the last and so this witness John is eminently qualified to be the conduit through which God, through which Jesus, through which the angel, through which John gave the revelation of Jesus Christ to those it was addressed to, the seven churches of Asia. And verse 3 of chapter 1 gives us an incredible directive says that blessed is the one who reads aloud the words of this prophecy and blessed are those who hear and who keep what is written in it for the time is what near we're not talking about ages to come we're talking about very short periods of time it's going to be close in time it's going to be near in time that the persecution of the churches of christ in Asia is going to begin and it's going to be ferocious and you better be ready and he's writing this book to get them ready and sending it by way of John and so 
as it were in the custom of the churches of Christ in the first century. The scriptures were read aloud every Lord's Day extensively because no one had Bibles or books of any kind except the very, very, very wealthy. And so the scriptures would be read aloud in the assembly. And so John, by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, gives a special blessing to whoever who does the reading in the assembly, and it gives what? A blessing to those who hear and who keep what is written in it for the time is near. Now that's a continuous blessing, my friends. If you read this book and you hear it, you will be blessed. There is no way that a blessing will elude you if you listen with ears to hear. And Jesus will talk about that to the seven churches, the absolute necessity of having ears to hear. And we want to look at this book objectively and read it for what it says, not what we want it to say, but for what it says. And so we're going to move forward in the coming several weeks to do just that. But my friends, Revelation was not written to us. And it wasn't it written for America, or written to America, rather. It wasn't written to people living in 2021. Now, can people today be blessed by this book? Absolutely. Because it is for us, but it's not written to us. The prophecies of this book have nothing to do whatsoever specifically with America or any other time other than the time in which the seven churches of Asia were persecuted. So uh, keep in mind, when, every, when we go through this book, keep in mind this one thing. Keep in mind verse 1. The things that must soon take place and also in verse 3, the time is near. Soon and near do not speak of 20 centuries away. And so John begins to talk to the addressees. The ones to whom this book is written to and the ones to whom it is addressed. And that is seven churches of Asia. No more, no less. That's who it's written to. And if you believe it's written to you, it's like stealing a letter out of your neighbor's mailbox addressed to him ripping it open and believing it's written to you. Nothing could be more foolish. But yet that's how many regard the book of Revelation. It was written to seven churches in Asia in the first century who were about to be persecuted in the horrible persecution of Domitian and other emperors that would follow him. And these words were to strengthen them and to embolden them and cause them to stand in the face of what was coming. And Jesus speaks directly to each one of these congregations and get, says, you need to get ready because persecution is coming and you need to get your act together. There's things amiss in your church, in your congregation. You need to fix in order to be able to withstand what is about to come to you. There are only 
a couple of exceptions. Five out of the seven churches were in one level of apostasy or another. Only two were not. Uh, the church at Philadelphia and uh, uh, the church at Smyrna to whom he says be faithful unto death. Now if you want a message in Revelation that applies to them and applies to you and applies to me today it is that be faithful unto death. But if we're looking for signs of the imminent coming of Christ from this book we will be sadly sadly disappointed because God is not going to tell you and me or anyone else for that matter when he's coming as Paul says the end of time will be like a thief in the night it won't be predicted like it is in the movies there's no signs of his coming none it's just that because of the brevity of life judgment is not very far away from any of us and so if there's any message in Revelation for us today it is this like them you better get ready because life is not going to last forever and there's going to be tribulation and difficulty getting to heaven and you need to get right and stay right in order to make the journey completely. And so next week we will begin to look at the specific messages of this book uh, in a survey form. Until then, uh, feel free to uh, write your comments and questions in the comments section. We'll address them next week as the Lord wills. And one thing I'm going to put in the comment section when we close here is a link to a commentary, I believe, that uh, uh, teaches the most accurate view of this book based upon what it says and not upon what other people say about it. And that is uh, Homer Haley, Brother Homer Haley from Florida College a number of years ago, he's now passed on, wrote a book called Revelation, a introduction and commentary. It's a very good book and I recommend it to you and we'll put the link in the comment section if you <clears throat> would like to obtain a copy of it. It is very valuable. Uh, over half the book is in the introduction, not in the commentary. Isn't that interesting? Um, apocalyptic language needs a lot of unraveling in order to understand it. But uh, there's nothing mysterious or uh, difficult to understand in any of the Bible, uh, including Revelation, if we put our mind to it. James says if any of us ask wisdom, we should ask God who gives bountifully. We can understand the book of Revelation. And Lord willing, we will come to a good understanding of it. One that is tied to what the scripture says, not tied to our emotional and entertainment mindset of the zeitgeist, the present age. So until next time, uh, next time being tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock for Calling on the Name of the Lord podcast right here at Russell H. McCullough. Coming to you on behalf of the Archdale Church of Christ, 2525 Archdale Drive, where you are always welcome. Archdale.org for more information. God bless you.